So you have 45 minutes and please leave some minutes for maybe some questions. Sure. Uh, well, <clears throat> first, thank you very much, uh, Alexander. And thank you very much to all the organizers for inviting me to present the new features in Maple 2021 at this uh, very interesting conference. So this is what I want to go through today, basically from, uh, um, from top left to bottom right. Um, I'll start with some of the new advanced mathematics features. And the first one is integration. So the int command uh, has a new option uh, method for uh, indefinite integrals. So this option already was present for definite integrals before, but it's now uh, the user has more control over which integration method Maple uses for indefinite integrals as well. So here's an example with two integrals of the same function, one of them using a, a method called Mayaji raw, which is some variant of the Mayaji method. And another one is the Risch integration algorithm. And in this case, you can see that the result returned by the Risch method is much simpler. And you can also request that you want to see um, the results from all the various sub algorithms of int. And that is by passing the keyword, the method name return verbose. Um, and then you see um, there's about uh, six or seven different methods. Oh, actually about 10. And the one, uh, there's four at the very end where it says fails, which we're not able to handle this function. And the other ones either returned uh, something similar or yeah, all, all return something equivalent, but there's, there's quite a bit of variety. And here just for comparison, this is what we used to have before for definite integrals. This is not a new feature. Um, where the return verbose option also existed, and there's uh, about 20 methods or so that, that Maple uses under the hood. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is multivariate limits. Maybe I should increase my uh, um, magnification a little bit. This is something I have been working on myself personally for a number of years now. Um, and this has been uh, there are some improvements that have been made for quotients uh, of analytic functions in the case where the, uh, the denominator is, is not homogeneous, but it's weighted homogeneous. So here's an example of such a polynomial in three variables, x, y, and z. Um, and it's not homogeneous, uh, but if you give weights, um, well, you will see, see that in a moment. Um, the, polynomial tools is homogeneous command tells us it's not homogeneous, but if you give weights two to both X and Y and weight one to Z, then it is weighted homogeneous. And the next command using the regular chains package just proves that this polynomial indeed has an isolated uh, root at the origin. So it's, it, uh, if that polynomial appears in the denominator, then our new uh, improvement to the multivariate limit command can handle it. So all of these limits can now be computed and they were not be computable in earlier versions of Maple. So here's one where the limit is zero or one. Uh, here's one where Maple can prove that the limit does not exist. Um, same here. And here's one where Maple can prove that the limit uh, in, is not finite, but uh, all, whichever way you approach the origin, you will end up at, at plus infinity. Um, the next section is about a, a few uh, additional simplifications for uh, expression involving the, the Lambert W function. Um, so these were also new and, and of course these examples are made so that they look very impressive and, and some fairly complicated expressions can be simplified um, to some nicer and easier ones. There's a small improvement for asymptotic functions, uh, the logarithmic integral. We can now compute the asymptotic expansion, which was previously not possible because it's a different asymptotic scale than most of the other functions that maybe can handle. And we can do this both at infinity and at the origin as well. Uh, there's a small improvement to the GF package. So here I'm creating the, the finite feed with eight elements by specifying an irreducible polynomial of degree three. And afterwards, uh, I have an easier way now of, of instantiating field 
elements by just uh, uh, using the, the, the module that I just created as a, as a constructor itself. So I say I want the element represented by the polynomial t squared plus one in the field F8 and the other next element t squared plus t. And then they can be added and multiplied as, as usual in this package. Um, I am, will continue with, uh, this is a new, uh, also a new interface functionality, the maple stesolve command, which is for solving differential equations, ordinary differential equations, either symbolically or numerically. In this case, we're talking about numerical solutions. It has been enhanced to now be able to solve vectorized uh, differential equations. So here's a, a differential equation of dimension um, four in total. So there's two vectors, uh, two vectorized equations, each of dimension two, and two vectorized equations for the initial conditions. And this can now be solved directly without having to convert them to scalar equations. And it's also possible to use the results in a plot as usual for these of numeric. Uh, the final thing in this section I want to present are some improvements to the LRE tools package. Uh, this is code that was contributed by Mark Van Hui from Florida State University and integrated into Maple 2021. Uh, so there is a new command to guess a recurrence relation, uh, provided that the underlying recurrence is holonomic, and that call is called uh, that routine is called guess recurrence. And so here we find the recurrence relation of the Fibonacci numbers. And there is also a new command for finding right factors of uh, linear recurrence operators. So here we have an occur uh, a linear recurrence operator with constant coefficients of order three. And we can find all the right factors. And in this case, there is uh, two families of, of right factors. One of them is just the factor E minus one. And the other one is a family, a parametric family of factors where uh, Z1 is, is a parameter. And actually, sorry, there's two parametric uh, families. There's another parametric family uh, also of order one uh, with two parameters. Uh, and these are the order one right factors. Um, so this is the second argument to the right factors command. And uh, if I specify order two, then I get something, uh, something similar. Okay, um, I will conclude this section and move on to the next one. Uh, there have been a number of uh, improvements with re uh, regards to visualization. Again, let me increase the magnification here. Um, the, the, both the two-dimensional and three-dimensional plotting routines for plotting functions, they have improved to automatically pick um, an interesting domain. So they look at the function, at the values of the function to determine what a good plotting domain is. So in this example, if you would have done that previously in Maple, then in earlier versions, then the domain would have just been centered uh, around the, the origin, but here it's determined that um, the, the, there's some symmetry in the plot, so uh, it's made sure that the, the plot domain is also symmetric. And something, uh, here is another example uh, with a function that's growing very quickly. So previously the standard domain would maybe go up to uh, 50 or 100 or something, and now here Maple does some smarts to determine what the growth is and picks a larger, uh, a larger uh, domain so that uh, the growth can be seen. Um, so here's an example using the explore command where we have a parametric function, just a parametric second degree polynomial. And if we change the, the leading coefficient in this case, and if it becomes negative, for example, you can see that the plotting domain automatically changes. Basically the shape of the curve stays the same as in this example and just the domain moves. Uh, other improvements are, so when there are some uh, parts of the plot where, uh, so this is a 3D example now, where the function that we're trying to plot is, is non-real. So for example, because what's under the square root here is negative, uh, then Maple will still pick um, a domain that shows the, uh, or some of the part where the function is real. So in, in, in earlier versions of Maple, the default domain would be in such a way that you wouldn't see anything, the plot would just be empty. 
And there have been uh, some improvements for rational functions. Now the plot will attempt to uh, automatically detect all the interesting features of the rational function. What the uh, uh, so this this shows you the rational function without explicitly highlighting those features, but it finds all the minima, all the maxima, all the discontinuities, all the inflection points, and so on. And here you can see all those points. In addition. Uh, another visualization improvement that was made was with respect to, to arrows. Uh, so here, what has changed is the look and feel of the arrow. So this looks much nicer now than it used to be in, in previous versions of Maple. Arrows look more slick. So here's a, a, a nice example with a spiral of, of arrows. So that concludes the, the visualization section. Um, I'll move on to the student packages. So Maple uh, already has a number of student packages for linear algebra, for calculus one, for multivariate calculus, uh, for differential, uh, for um, uh, numerical analysis. And this is a new package now for ordinary differential equations. So there's a number of commands in here, about um, 25, I would say. And um, so I want to show one of them. So uh, the ODE plot command. So this has this brings up a, a nice GUI interface, um, where which has GUI controls. So the the student can pick what kind of um, model they want to play with. Let's pick the Lotka Volterra model here, and then I can change the the ranges. So this is the time parameter. This is um, x and y. So let's make that range slightly bigger, for example. Sorry. And also change the y range a little bit. And so the updates are, are immediate. And one can do this with, with, with other models as well. Um, you can say I wanna I want the time to go further than this, for example. Uh, yeah, so that means the spiral goes closer to the to the um, equilibrium point. Okay. Um, next, I want to talk about some uh, performance improvements. Uh, there's a number of those. Um, so the map command has been improved for common operations. So these type tables show timings of applying these functions here in the first argument, subtraction, so common arithmetic operations, uh, applying the absolute value, checking whether some element exists in a list, checking for a certain type, and so on for this list here. So this is a list with 2 million elements. And uh, so this the table only shows the, the speed up and the, and the memory reduction. And so the, the, for, for the speed up, it's all, for almost all examples, it's uh, the, the speed up is, is uh, a two digit factor, almost three digit for the top example here. And the memory improvement is a little bit less, but also quite impressive. So here's another example. So this is a simple list. This is a list of pairs, so a nested list. And for that, we have, we have similar speedups um, also for other operations, for taking the first element of each list, sublist, for example, um, taking the max and the min of each sublist and things like that. Um, as you may know, the uh, package underlying a package in Maple for doing multi-precision both um, integer and floating point arithmetic is GMP. And we have upgraded to a newer version of GMP than before. So now we're using GMP version 6.2.0. Um, and that has led to performance speedups uh, for elementary integer operations, such as addition, multiplication, computing, greatest common divisor, and so on, so on, by between 5 and 10%. We've also uh, sped up uh, quite considerably the computation of binomial coefficients for uh, um, yeah, integer arguments. So for example, the following computation here computes a binomial coefficient of 2 million over 50,000. Um, and that is instantaneous on this machine, but it, 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 uh, it took about 100 times longer, so a couple of seconds actually. 
uh, in previous versions of Maker. Uh, finally, there's an improvement to the polyhedral sets package. Uh, so a polyhedral set is defined either as the convex hull of uh, a set of vertices in several dimensions, or it's given by a system of linear inequalities. So that's what we do here. So we can construct a polyhedral set. That's an, an object in that package. And now uh, what we do is we, uh, we project this polyhedral set to the last variable, to the variable x5. And this is something that still takes some time, but it's about four times faster. It's only about uh, two seconds on my machine now. Uh, while well, it used to be about 10 seconds in previous versions of Maple. Um, and uh, the reason that it is faster is um, there is a, a new and faster algorithm for checking redundant constraints. So redundancy checking happened before as well, but now that part of the algorithm is, is faster than it used to be. Moving on to the, to the next section. So we already talked about a new student package for ordinary differential equations. Uh, so that is mainly for, uh, to facilitate teaching about ODEs. But we also have some new and more powerful algorithms for symbolically solving uh, linear ordinary differential equations in this case of order two. Um, so here's an example. Um, These examples are all ones that could not be solved in previous releases of Maple, but now we can solve them in terms of, um, of hypergeometric functions. Uh, so here's one where you see the general hy hypergeometric function. We can call the ODE test command to check that it's actually a solution. Here is an example where uh, Maple is able or DSOLF is able to determine what type of what special type of hypergeometric functions are in the solution. So we get a solution in terms of special functions. In the next example, we get a solution in terms of um, one F1 hypergeometric functions, coma functions in this case. And sometimes it's possible that Maple actually can find a solution in this case, uh, a solution not in terms of hypergeometric functions, but in terms of point functions. As you can see, uh, the result is quite complicated, but uh, there's actually also um, a, a basis of uh, hypergeometric solutions in this case. So if you pass the additional optional argument hypergeometric solves, then you will find this easier representation. And again, we can check that this is indeed a solution. Um, there's a number of improvements in the graph theory package. Um, so there's uh, eight new commands here, and I'm going to demonstrate, I think, most of them. Um, there are a number of ways to encode graphs uh, as, as strings. Um, two of them are new in, in this Maple version. They're called the Newick and the Prefer code. Um, Okay, I guess I should load the graph theory package first, then this will work. Um, so here's a random graph with uh, 25 uh, vertices, and it's a tree. We said it's supposed to be a tree. So now we want to encode this in a, in a linear fashion as a, as a string. So here's the Newick encoding, and this is the, the proof of encoding. Actually, the proof of encoding is not a string. It's just a list of, uh, of vertices. Um, what's also new is the, the identify graph. Uh, this can identify a graph that's given in an, in an abstract way. Uh, if it's a special graph in the, uh, in the, the, the graph theory package knows about. So here we take one of the special graphs. It's uh, the Hoffman singleton graph, which has 550 vertices and 175 edges. And we modify it. Uh, it would be trivial to ask Maple to recognize this one because it already knows, but we modify it. So we look at uh, the edge number 100, which um, connects vertices 20 and 25. And then we take the neighborhoods of both of those vertices, 20 and 25, and we remove all those vertices and also uh, all, the, all the edges in there. So we remove a part of the graph to get, to get a new graph. Uh, so we removed um, um, 14 vertices in total and uh, leading to about removal of half of the edges of the total graph. So this is a, a completely new graph, which we constrate, const constructed in this way. 
And now we're asking Maple, do you know what this new graph is isomorphic to? And Maple says, yes, this is actually isomorphic to the Sylvester, Sylvester graph. Uh, we can do something similar as well by not checking for uh, isomorphism with uh, a full graph, but uh, isomorphism with a subgraph. So in this case, we're explicitly constructing uh, the Sylvester graph. And now we're asking, is that Sylvester graph isomorphic to a subgraph of the previous graph of the Hoffman singleton graph, which we just already have seen that that's the case. And uh, in this case, maybe we can also identify that that, that that is true. There's a number of improvements to bipartite matching. So here we construct um, a matrix, a cost matrix. You may uh, think of it like that. Um, so red things are high cost, green things are cheap. Um, and now we construct a two by two block matrix, which has those those costs basically uh, attached to the to the edges of of, of a bipartite graph. Um, and sorry, not the edges, the vertices. Um, and uh, actually, both the vertices and the edges. So the idea is that the vertices in this graphs are seven workers and seven tasks, and the weights in this matrix say how how long would it take a specific worker to complete uh, a certain task. And so, this is a discrete optimization problem. We construct a corresponding graph, and then the bipartite matching. Uh, will not just find uh, out that it is a bipartite graph, that is trivial in this case, but it will find uh, a bipartite um, subgraph of minimal weight. And that, that is the optimal or N, one optimal solution to this problem. There are a number of new special graphs. Uh, so right now we have in total 113 special graphs in the, in the graph theory package. Um, the butterfly graph is well known from people who are doing fast Fourier transforms. Um, there's also a number of graphs related to a chessboard. So this is the, it's, you can see it very well, but these are all the movements or all the elements of a chessboard that are related by the moves that a knight can make. Uh, here's the queen's graph, which are all the elements of a chessboard um, that are related in the way that, that a queen can move. And finally, I have been a, a number of performance improvements to the graph theory package as well. So a, a lot of the commands that existed before have been sped up considerably in the current maple version. Okay, uh, the next topic I want to talk about is <clears throat> a solution steps. Um, so this is something that has existed before there in particular in the student packages, there's a number of packages that give step-by-step -step solutions for students to certain uh, uh, frequent uh, and uh, type of problems that students have to solve. So here's an example for long, long division. There you can see all the steps um, for polynomials. In this case, you can do the same thing for, uh, for integers as well. Here's an example of solving a, 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 an exponential equation in this case. And here you can see you don't just see the um, <clears throat> the equations as they're being manipulated, but you also have an explanation of, of each step. And finally, here's an example. There are many more than those. I, uh, I'm only showing three of those for linear algebra. Um, this is a new option. So the inverse tutor has existed before, but then now it has the option output equals steps, which basically shows um, how to perform Gaussian elimination on this matrix in order to compute the inverse. And this is the inverse is the final result of these steps. Um, I'm moving on to the signal processing package. The signal processing package has a number, about 10 new commands and a number of improved commands um, for um, reasons of brevity, I'm only able to show a few of those. Um, so I'll start with the music command. Music is a fancy abbreviation for the multiple signal classifier method. Um, 
which is able to to uh, find the the frequencies that are present in in an in a noisy signal um, by computing eigenvalues and things like that. So here's an example. Uh, we create a signal and we add some noise to it, and this is the noisy signal. Um, and now we're looking at the power spectra, both at the signals themselves and the power spectra for the original signal and for the noisy um, versions. Oh, did I forget something? Yeah, I didn't execute with signal process. Sorry. Always the same thing. Let's do this again. Yeah. So this is the uh, um, the original signal, and this is the noisy signal. So you can see visually that they're different, but they're not too different. They're just slightly different. So the noise is not uh, not not a whole lot. And these are the uh, the periodic periodograms. So you that they they plot the the power, the amplitude over the frequency, basically. And so you can see there seems to be one main contributing frequency at around 10 hertz and another one at slightly over 20 hertz for the original signal. For the noisy signal, um, you can see the noise and you still have the same peaks at, at about 10 and about 20 hertz. But the way the signal was constructed, you probably didn't see that. Um, there's actually three main contributing frequencies. So there's the, there's one at 10 hertz, which are very, very close together. And the standard, uh, the plot of, of, of the power spectrum, spectrum of the signal is not able to distinguish those, neither for the, not even for the original signal, let alone for the noisy signal. But uh, that's what this music method is particularly good at. It's called a pseudo power spectrum, and it will be able uh, whether there's noise or not, it will be able to find out what the what the characteristic frequencies are. Uh, the next command is called Hampel. Uh, this is useful to detect uh, outliers uh, and removing outliers from data. Um, so again, we're constructing uh, uh, a vector of 50 elements. We filter it through the Hampel method and we plot both the original and the um, modified signal. So the modified, uh, the original signal is the green one, uh, just more or less like a sine curve. Then we added artificially added some outliers to it. So those are the red ones. And then the filtered signal is the blue one, which pretty much except for this little outlier, which is still there. And, and you can hear, see a little bit here, but it does a pretty good job at filtering out the outliers. Uh, integrating uh, over a signal is, is something that's frequently uh, has been requested, so we can now do that. So here's a discrete, uh, so this is, um, this is actually the uh, uh, continuous signal, uh, but what we pretend is we don't know how that signal was constructed and we have uh, a discretized version of that signal which is given to us and we want to est give an estimate of what the area under the signal is. Um, so this is taking the symbolic expression where we know how we constructed the signal. And this is just taking the data that we measured and estimating the, the, the integral. And that is, as you can see, it's very close. The find peak point command is not new. This is something that has existed before, but it has a new calling sequence now. Uh, so you can give the, the coordinates of the points as two separate uh, vectors, not, not a single uh, vector. So this is a, a continuous uh, signal, uh, which we sample to make it into a discrete signal. And now we're asking to find the peak points. Uh, there's also two new options, minimum height and maximum height here. Uh, and that may, means we're not interested in the absolute peak points, but we only want peak points here that are of bounded height. So in this case, we're getting the three blue ones as maximum peak points below 2.5 of height less than 2.5, and the three green ones as maximum peak points of height less, uh, greater than minus 2.5. Okay. Um, there is a new a polynomial algebra package for approximate polynomial. So basically what this can do is do approximate greatest common divisor computations and approximate um, factoring. 
So we already had an approximate package in Maple before, which is called the SNAP package. Um, that's for univariate polynomials. Um, and it also has uh, a bit of a disadvantage in that the user needs to provide a tolerance. So for the new package, it can work with multivariate polynomials. And uh, the, the commands in this package automatically figure out the right tolerance. Basically, they do a single value decomposition in order to figure out what the degrees of the polynomials involved of the answer should be. So here we take a fairly simple binomial in two variables and uh, we make sure that it has floating point coefficients. And then we multiply it uh, with two cofactors to get two different polynomials. So H is our designated GCD, our greatest common divisor. That, um, okay, and so the GCD computation, the numerical GCD computation is based on the Sylvester matrix. So this is a sub matrix of the Sylvester matrix where we remove six rows and six uh, columns in total. Uh, and by a general theory of, of these sub matrices of Sylvester matrices, if this sub particular sub matrix has full rank, then the GCD uh, of F and G has degree less than three. So we do a, um, we compute these, the, either the Sylvester matrix itself or these relevant sub matrices, we do a single value decomposition in order to determine the rank. And that was, that's what gives us the degree of the, of the numerical GCD. If we compute the degree exactly, then of course, due to round of errors, it's always going to be one. The, the degree is always constant. But that is not useful. What we want is uh, what's the most likely uh, GCD uh, with, with, within a certain tolerance. Okay, so for this matrix, uh, we determine that this has full rank. So that means the degree actually has degree less than three. Okay, so now in addition to what we did before, we introduce a little bit of noise. So on the order of 10 to the minus eight. So one term here and another term here. Um, and now, uh, and then we compute the GCD. And this is the answer. So it is uh, indeed a polynomial of degree two. But you can see it has some terms in there that are very, very small. And these are out uh, due to the noise. Uh, so what we do now is uh, we apply F normal. So F normal will uh, normalize the coefficients of a polynomial to re remove coefficients that are very, very small absolute values. So basically it will remove the noisy terms. Um, then we multiply this polynomial by the training coefficient of our original GCD, just so that one of the coefficients is the same. So that removes the noisy terms you can see, and you can already see that this result is very, very close numerical to the designated GCD that we used to construct this example. And we compute, uh, we can compute the, uh, the the relative error here, and it's ordered on the order of ten to the minus uh, nine, ten to the minus ten, which is Maple's default setting of digits. So if you choose a higher value of digits, you will get a better answer from from this GCD command. And we have something similar for factorization. So the role that's played by the the Sylvester matrix for the GCD is uh, this matrix is called the Rupert matrix for factorization. And again, the rank deficiency of the Rupert matrix uh, shows us the number of factors. So this is for the exact problem. Uh, the rank deficiency is two. So this tells us the polynomial factors into, into two factors. And again, we introduce a, a little bit of noise here on the order of 10 to the minus eight and do the factorization. And we get something with, um, yeah, Lots of floating point coefficients, many of them very small, as you can see. So those are owed to the noise. But the, the important thing to notice is here we get two factors. This is the first one, which has degree um, two. And this is the second one, which has degree three. So at least they already have the right degrees. So Maple was able to figure out what the right degrees are. And again, um, uh, we, we, we multiply those out and to check whether they, they give the original polynomial, polynomial and we apply F normal to the result to get rid of the spurious coefficients. 
um, and then we do we, we do a norm computation with uh, with our input polynomial and again the relative error is uh, is on the order of a little bit worse than before but um, uh, about the same orders of magnitude as given by digits okay um, Maybe I'll show one more thing here, and that is uh, LaTeX export. Uh, Maple has had LaTeX export before, but it has been improved significantly for Maple 2021 for the last latest release. So here's an example of a Maple worksheet, um, which has formulas in it. It has plots in it, in this case, a 2D plot of a Fornoy diagram. It has an image in it, and it has a hyperlink. And now I can say, um, export this to, to LaTeX. And then I can I can give it a name. In this case, I want to call it LaTeX2 because LaTeX1 already exists. And then uh, this will uh, create a number of uh, files. So it created this LaTeX file, LaTeX2.tech. It created uh, image files. Here's one for the image that was in the worksheet. Here's one for the plot. Um, and then I can, unfortunately, I don't have LaTeX installed on this laptop. So uh, I, I'm just showing you a PDF document that was generated on a different machine for this, uh, for this document. And that document is here. So, uh, and this now, the, the goal of the new LaTeX export is to not make the LaTeX document look similar to the Maple worksheet, but to make it look like a real LaTeX document, like a LaTeX document that you would, somebody would write from, from scratch without using a Maple worksheet. So um, <clears throat> we, we can handle formulas. So one thing that is new here that uh, LaTeX export couldn't do before is uh, line breaking longer formulas. Um, we can handle plots, we can handle images. And we can handle hyperlinks. I think this is also new that was not uh, available before. So if I click on this link, uh, it, it actually works. It's a hyperlink that's embedded into the PDF file. Okay. So much for LaTeX export. Um, a few more things, uh, and then I'll stop. I want to say about uh, the, the user interface. It's now easier to integrate. Um, math into your text. Um, so whenever I want to enter something something new, here's a new line. By default, this is in, in uh, you can see here above, it's a non-executable math mode. So I can type this, sorry, I'll make it bigger. And then if I hit enter, nothing, nothing happens, it won't evaluate. It's just for display purposes, basically something like this. But I can make it executable math. Oops, sorry. Let me type it again. Make it executable math. And it doesn't evaluate. It's supposed to. Okay, so maybe I have to, to run this. No. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have tried this better before. Um, but anyway, so previously we only had these two modes of, uh, I think it's because I'm, I'm, I'm in worksheet mode and not in document mode. Uh, we previously had only two modes, text and math, and now uh, you can easily, it was possible to switch to non-executable math before using a context menu operation, but now that's more easier and more, more obvious how to do that. Uh, there's a change to how uh, things are being displayed. So for scientific notation, uh, there instead of a dot as previously, there's now this this X, a visible X character, which can be changed if you if you don't like it. And here's a very very nice improvement to code edit regions. Um, so code edit regions are meant to include pieces of code in your worksheet, and they have nice features such as syntax highlighting uh, and so on in different colors. And one problem that they had before, if you hit enter in a code edit region, it used to be the case that that would in insert a new line. So you cannot just step through a whole worksheet and have all the code in the worksheet, whether it's in a, behind a regular prompt like this one, 
or whether it's in a code edit region execute because once you get keep hitting enter and you get into a code edit region you would be stuck in that code edit region so now the default behavior of the enter key in the code edit region is to execute the code and if you want to add a new line you have to use shift enter so this is more or less the opposite of as what it was before so now i'm hitting shift enter to enter new lines and now i'm hitting uh, enter in order to um to actually execute the code. And I can do that by starting outside the code edit region. So this enters, uh, executes the series command. Now I'm inside the code edit region. I can hit enter again. This uh, defines the collapse procedure and then I'm outside again and I can use this procedure. Okay. Um, I will stop here and uh, um, I'm, I'm ready for some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jürgen, for your interesting talk. So, can, uh, I, can I ask a question? You're welcome, Sergei. Uh -huh. Jürgen, uh, please, uh, do you have a plans to use, uh, to implement F5 for Jira algorithms for Grubner basis constructions? Um, we, we do not have any plans at the moment. No. No. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, more questions? please. Uh, may I ask you a question about uh, polyhedral set uh, package? Mm -hmm. uh, there is an alternative package, QHAL, uh, which is uh, free. And uh, in previous version, it was possible to use it in the geometry, geometry package mm -hmm. uh, for computation of convex hulls and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the A API, uh, the interface between the Maple and between the QHAL was very poor. It was very truncated. Uh, and what about in this version? I, I, I don't understand. What do, you, what do you mean by truncated? Truncated. So you can use only a reduced set of commands uh, that yeah. QHAL can uh, give. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so those are two. Uh, so the one is called computational geometry, and the other one is called co polyhedral sets. And those are you're right. So computational geometry uses QHAL under under the hood. Uh, I think there are some implementations in Maple uh, as well. And you're right that it does not offer uh, access to all of QHAL's functions. Uh, so there, there's a, there's a selection here. Um, the polyhedral sets package is completely independent of that. This was developed by uh, a group of people at Western University. Mm -hmm. uh, but polyhedral set package reduces only to rational coefficients, rational numbers. Right. So that, that is a package which does exact computations. So uh, my understanding is that QHAL uh, does numerical uh, computations. So this is exact computations and therefore it handles um, only uh, uh, polyhedral sets with, with rational coefficients. So either rational coordinates or, or the coefficients of the inequalities are, are rational. Uh, however, I believe that uh, parametric polynomial sets are supported. Mm. Thank you. So this, this is a list of the commands in, in that package. I see the number of commands uh, was increased. So, uh... Maybe more questions to uh, Jürgen. If uh, there is no more questions, I, uh, I want to say thanks one more to our speaker. And, Thank you. Uh, and now we have a, a short break because the next talk uh, by Bogdanov and Sadiko will be at uh, 16.00 exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh.
Я что-то пока не вижу наших следующих докладчиков, но еще есть некоторое время. Будем надеяться, что они подключатся.